Today, I'm going to read Dizzy in Your Eyes by Pat Mora. It was easier to get a um, Kindle copy of this book rather than um, going to the library because I um, live where we have just a small library and the times that it was open didn't match with when I could get there. I um, really love this book. The author is bilingual. The book feels like kind of a sampler of different styles of poetry, although our evaluation criteria seems to be more for kids' poetry. And I really love poets like Shel Silverstein and that kind of thing. Um, one of my favorites, like we read for class, is Ella Telefoni. But this one um, is a little bit different since it's written for an older audience. And um, I really, it really caught my attention and I really enjoyed the book. Um, the first one I am going to share with you, I figured I'd share a couple poems with you, is called Grandma's Joke. Um, so I'll start by reading it to you and then I'll talk about how it matches our criteria. Tell me again, Grandma. Tell me about you and Holland. Grandma laughs, her sweet as pansies laugh, and moves her to her that moves to her shoulders. And they laugh too, and her eyes begin their dance. Start at the beginning. You and Grandpa in the elevator. Her laugh keeps slipping out. I wasn't that young, but I was dressed hippie-like, off to work with my purse and blue scarf. A man entered the elevator. We were alone. We got off at the same floor. The next day, it happened again. My heart floated up with the elevator. He asked my name. I didn't speak much English, but he started calling me Viola. I look in the mirror and stare at my face. Eventually, he took me to Holland to meet his family. They teased us. Your grandpa's aunt was blind, but she liked me to visit her. She'd feel the white tablecloth, seeing it with her fingers. Not this one, she'd say. It's to her daughter. It's not good enough for her. One day, I knelt down on one knee and asked grandpa's mother for his hand. Everyone laughed at my joke. My French grandma, she proposed to my grandpa. I really like that. I thought it played with non-tradition, so, but you could still picture it. You can see and feel the family genealogy there. And um, I think that the meter's good. Um, the, um, it can expand our imagination because I don't really think about my grandma proposing to my grandpa, but it's fun to think about what happened in their lives. And I, I can feel grandma stories. I love grandma stories. Um, it challenges our beliefs in the traditional and you can feel the, the, again, the family, um, what's happening with the family there. And, um, it, I think it's relatable for all of us. I really loved the picture of her and the ele grandma in the elevator and grandpa and the shyness and then the friendship, you know, the, as the relationship develops all the way to becoming engaged and grandma asking, um, I thought it was pretty readable, although I kind of struggle to read poetry out loud. The next one I wanted to read, um, the author Pat Mora is bilingual and this, pa this poem is called Conversation, Conversacion. And I really thought that was good. I love the use of two different languages. So I'm going to try. If you speak good Spanish, please forgive me because my Spanish comes from high school. Um, my return missionary sons say it does not sound good, but there sounds better, so that's okay. So Conversation, Conversacion. New here? Why so sad? Sad? No hablo inglés. Oh, but muy bonita. Ah, tú hablas español? No, muy pequeño. I'm taking Spanish. You think I sound funny? Sí? No hablo inglés. Nada. Ah, you'll learn. English is easy. Easy? Sí, you're learning. Inglés, muy fácil. Oh, no. Español es muy fácil. Inglés es muy difícil. I like that it rhymes the, the English or the Spanish words, too. Maybe I can teach you. English, 
And you can teach me Spanish. Si? Sí? No entiendo. Yo, maestro de inglés. Tu, maestra de español. Oh, so you can laugh. What's your name? Tu nombre. Me llamo Morena. Morena Bonita. We look at one another, wary but cautious, her eyes mysterious, mine, I hope, salacious. Slowly, like the sun rising, she smiles. I really like that one. I thought it was fairly readable. Um, it would be better if I was a little bit more bilingual. But in general, I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was delightful that it used the two languages together. Um, I live in a small Oregon town with a lot of Hispanic kids. So I really have come to appreciate and enjoy some of the bilingual literature that I have seen as I work at the schools. Um, I thought it was relatable. You can just see and feel for each character, both the young man who's trying to talk to the um, Hispanic girl. And um, you could kind of feel, I think, what it would be like to not speak much English and be in that situation. And also to be talking and possibly flirting, I guess you could call it that, with the girl. Um, it was kind of a challenge. You could see the challenge in the relationship in the beginning of um, hopefully a friendship and the challenge of not being able to communicate. I really liked that idea. Um, it says, uh, right here, stirring scenes of action. Yeah, there was lots of action in there that I think we all um, could see and relate to. Um, the sounds of the language. I like that the Spanish rhymed too, and I like the use of the two languages together. I really thought that was a creative use of the language. Um, another one that I wanted to talk about is, let me see if I can find it here. I thought I marked it. I'm sorry, I'm learning technology. I think I skipped it. This one, as I said, this was a sampler. The other one I thought was interesting. It was called the list, to-do list. And I thought this one didn't seem like a traditional poem, so I thought I would include it here. On Friday, I'll shove all my books into my locker. At the, at the click of the lock, I'll smile. I'll ride the bus, smiling at all the people who drive me crazy and drive them cr a bit crazy too. At home, I'll crank up the music until the walls vibrate and make myself a giant sandwich, three cheese, cheddar, Swiss, and pepper jack, and mustard, mayo, lettuce, more cheddar, pickles. I'll fill the biggest bowl in the house with chips. If anyone speaks to me, I'll signal that I can't hear while I eat all the chips by myself, smiling. At night, I'll laugh with my friends as we eat our big-as-the-table pizza, black olive, sausage, pepperoni, and cheese. Saturday, I'll sleep as late as I want. If anyone frowns, I will point at my to-do list. A man of leisure. I'll take a walk and nod at everyone I see. Since my books are safe in my locker, I will also nod at any dogs I meet. When my friends come over, I'll sit at my drums and bang the rhythms that will stop freeway traffic throughout the city. Without needing to talk, our band will play original songs that record labels will covet. I'll open a letter from some anonymous donor who sends me, a $10, sends me $10 bills. At the mall, cute girls will embarrass us with their endless flirting, especially with me. Sunday will be a repeat of Saturday, except no letter, of course, but mom will surprise me with stacks of my favorite foods, tacos, burgers, fries, chocolate chip cookies, three gallons of ice cream. My to-do list says I may not share, except with my friends. No, this is not some lame dream. I'm a list maker, and I know sensible lists when I see one. I thought this one was a good one to include because it um, wasn't a traditional poem. This book, um, because it is extra, uh, or because it's a Kindle book, 
it has extra information that the um, the regular one doesn't, the print book doesn't have. Um, there's one more, and then I will leave the rest to you. I can't find how to get to it here. I'm having trouble remembering how to use the technology. Sorry about that. Um, the author uses, um, there's different ones. This one was kind of more traditional, but I thought I would include it since this is called Poems About Love. And I'll end with a sad one, I thought. Um, dumped. I can't believe you dumped me. For months, I felt so happy inside. What a catastrophe. Now I feel ugly and just want to hide. For those months, I felt so happy inside. Was everything you said untrue? Now I just want to hide and try to forget I loved you. Still do. Everything you said untrue? Let's just be friends. I hate the words. I'm trying to forget I loved you and still do. I ache at the mean rumors I've heard. Let's just be friends. Haunting words. Me? A lump you dumped. Casually. How I ache at the rumors I've heard. My heart broke. My private catastrophe. So I thought this one, the challenge would be to figure out um, how to get on. You can kind of feel that, that the challenge in it is that the person has to move on from the breakup. But I think we all can relate to the teenage angst and how much we feel about that. I'm not sure delightful. Um, I thought it was interesting now long past high school to remember those feelings and to be able to relate and know that, hey, it's going to be okay. Um, I thought that one was good to read. You could read it out loud. Um, and it had strong imagery, even though, um, and um, it's not like the children's poems that I can think of. It still has strong, you can feel the imagery and the, um, the way that the poem is put together. I thought the meter is good. It has a good rhythm. It kind of lends itself. Um, I don't feel like I'm talented at reading poetry, but I feel like there were natural breaks that I tended to stop at. And I thought that was good. I really would recommend this book. There's a lot more poems in here that I thought were interesting. The author said she kind of looked at it um, like a, um, a song or a sonnet. And I thought that was good. I'm going to add one more because I think this one was funny. Sisters. It's nice having a sister, especially if she's older and quickly outgrows her clothes. It's nice having a sister, especially if she's a shopper and you laugh together until it hurts. It's nice having a sister, especially when you both pick your brother, pick on your brother and tell your mother it's his fault. It's nice having a sister, especially when you can join her and her friends for pizza or a burger. It's nice having or finding a sister, especially when she smooths her powder and new makeup on you. It's nice having a, a sister, especially when boys come over and some of them like you better. It's nice having a sister, especially when you, she whispers a secret your parents don't know. It's nice having a sister, as together you grow older and share years of private laughter. I like that. I like the images in that. I just thought there was a lot of really good images. There's things about cats. There's haikus in here. Um, it's, it's really an interesting book, and I would encourage you to read it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.